back to Dr. Suchita's interactive class. Today we will see one of the online practical demonstration for an experiment which is based on pH metry. We are going to determine the pKa value that is dissociation constant of one of the weak acid by pH metry titration with strong base. We will try to understand first how this weak acid will dissociate. If I take a weak acid in aqueous media, it will dissociate to give me the ion CH3COO minus plus H plus. When this acid is half neutralized, what will happen? If I apply a law of mass action, what equation it will give? It will give me the number of ions which are dissociated with respect to number of ions which are undissociated. This ratio is obtained by utilizing by applying the law of mass action. Now at half neutralization point what happens the concentration of salt and concentration of undissociated molecules in case of weak acid ok this will remain same. So your dissociation constant we can relate with respect to the concentration of H plus. This is an bottom line of today's experiment that we can correlate the value of dissociation constant with respect to concentration of H plus ion. So if we able to find out the concentration of H plus ion at half neutralization point, we can able to find out the pKa value or Ka of a weak acid, given weak acid. For this particular experiment, we need to have an apparatus which is pH meter which able to measure the pH of solution. This pH meter we have to utilize an electrode which will able to measure the concentration of H plus ion that is the glass electrode, burette, pipette, stirrer and magnetic stirrer or magnetic needle. This is a power switch of pH meter. I have tried to show here the instrument in its digital fashion. This is power switch. You have to switch on the instrument. This is a digital display which will tell you what is the pH of solution and there are two norms. One is temperature adjustment norm. You have to uh, see what is the room temperature. Accordingly, you have to switch on that particular adjust the pH, adjust the temperature on that temperature knob and calibration knob for pH. Now, this is an, your glass electrode or pH sensor. This pH sensor or glass electrode actually made up of or combined with working electrode and reference electrode. Reference electrode is the one whose potential is known to you or remains constant. We have seen hydrogen electrode, calomel electrode, silver electrode. So calomel or silver has been combined with the working electrode to form a glass electrode. So this is your glass electrode, simply an glass tube. Okay. And this is your glass membrane which contains 0.1 normal HCl solution where actually the exchange of ions takes place. This is a silver wire dipped in a chloride solution and metal dips in a salt solution form a half cell. Like that you are dipping here a silver wire in a chloride solution. Now the composition of glass membrane is very important here we have formed the glass membrane with sodium, calcium and silicate. Now this particular glass membrane makes it working, defines the working range of glass electrode. It works in a 0 to 12. Now pH scale is known to you, pH scale is known to you which will correlate, which we can correlate with dissociation of water, the pKW value 1 into 10 to the power kW value 1 into 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 14. Now this pH scale is directly related to dissociation of water as 1 to 14 pH scale. This particular glass membrane allows me to work in 0 to 12 in that particular pH range. Now if I do some modification with composition by addition of lithium, I can able to work this particular electrode up to 14 pH range. Now the reaction which takes place at this electrode or glass membrane is exchange of ion. Through this sodium is there in your uh, glass membrane. It exchange with your external solution in which it has been dipped with respect to exchange of H plus ion. So this is an electrode reaction or we can say membrane exchange reaction takes place while it measures the 
pH of solution. This is an reference electrode. Simply you can form silver wire dipped in a salt solution. And this is a glass barrel with saturated KCl solution so that the potential developed by this particular silver electrode which is 0 0.240 volt will remain constant with the saturated KCl solution. We can combine this with the glass membrane and we can form the glass electrode. This, an, this is an electrical presentation, CLD presentation of this particular glass electrode where you are having glass electrode with reference solution test solution and again the glass electrode or we can say reference electrode with glass membrane test solution at at junction with the again reference electrode. Now how we can utilize this pH meter? We can utilize this pH meter we have to take care while, while operating while utilizing this particular pH meter always we have to keep this electrode in distilled water or keep the membrane hydrated because if the membrane has an habit to get dehydrated if we keep as it is outside and it will not will not function properly. We can uh, utilize this pH meter, we can utilize this glass electrode to measure the pH of solutions, colloidal, turbid solutions. Now, we can utilize it is very easy to operate, but we can't utilize this at higher temperature. We can't utilize this at higher temperature or for some, for some fluoride solutions also. So, we have to take care while utilizing this pH meter. Uh, before uh, making the switch on, we have to attach this pH electrode to the pH meter. Now, switch on the instrument, make it power on, it will become red color. Uh, you can see when I make the power on, it has been converted into this particular red dot will tell you. Now uh, the instrument has been on. Now I have to standardize this pH meter. Okay. First what I have done, I have taken care of room temperature. Now I need to calibrate or I, I need to standardize the pH meter. This is a procedure I have uh, tried to put some points which are needed for our today's experiment. We will go for calibration of pH meter. For every Before starting the experiment with instrumental analysis, you need to standardize the apparatus. You need to confirm whether the readings obtained by the instrument which is under utilization gives me the same result for your experiment to be represented accurate and precise. In case of pH meter, you have to op, uh, follow some standard operating procedures to calibrate it. Okay? We can calibrate the pH meter by utilizing the buffer solutions which are available in the market of pH 4, 7, 9 or you can utilize 0 0.05 molar potassium hydrogen phthalate solution which gives me a constant pH value as pH 4. So, you can pick up the pH 4 solution in a beaker, dip your electrode in a buffer, buffer solution and you can measure the pH of the solution by 4. If it is not showing 4, you have to adjust the pH by utilizing the calibrate knob so that you can obtain the pH 4. When you are going for pH 9 and 7, you have to take care that the asymmetric potential developed by this glass electrode, you have to adjust the knob and calibrate accordingly. Before utilizing the pH electrode for further experiment, you have to wash the electrode with distilled water. Now, this is the second part of your experiment after standardization of pH meter, you have to go for your actual experimental procedure. So, whatever the weak acid has been provided to you here, we are taking an example as 0.1 normal CH3COH that is the acetic acid 0.1 normal solution which you have to fill in one of the burette. Second burette you are filling with distilled water. Now, you are preparing your beaker instead of conical flask we are utilizing here a beaker so that your electrode will be properly in a solution. So, you have to pick up a beaker, you have to place definite amount of acetic acid solution in that beaker through the burette. So, what you are doing? You are adding, you are taking 20 ml of 0.1 normal acetic acid solution in a beaker and 30 ml distilled water to be added in a beaker so that that volume will be 
uh, utilized so that your electrode will deep in that particular solution. While utilizing this burettes, you have to always take care that you are utilizing calibrated burettes for your experiment. Once your beaker is ready, once your beaker is ready, you have to take care that the burette which is utilized for your experiment is an micro burette because we are going to deliver a definite quantity of NaOH that is the strong base which we are utilizing 0.5 normal NaOH strong base we have taken over here in a micro burette we are going to deliver definite amount of strong base 0.3 ml every time into this acetic acid solution so that the titration of acid base takes place in routine analysis acid base titration we are utilizing we have done with phenolphthalein indicator okay without instrument non instrumental titrations we have utilized indicator here without using indicator you are performing the titration by measuring the ph as all neutralization reactions gives me acid plus base gives me salt and water so I am easily able to find out if I am able to find out the pH of solution I can able to find out the neutralization points or equivalence point of my titration okay as it is a stoichiometric titration. So what you have done you have filled your microburette with 0.5 normal NH solution you have taken your beaker along with the magnetic stirrer which will stir the solution and you have dipped your electrode never ever stir the solution with electrode you have to take care. Okay, you have adjusted your temperature knob, you have calibrated your instrument and your actual experiment now has been started where before adding NMH you are going to measure the pH of solution and after every 0.3 ml equivalent addition to this acidic acid you are going to measure the pH of solution. So here your experiment starts and after every addition you are going to start your magnetic stirrer for some time, make it off and then measure the pH your digital pH meter will give here the values of pH after every addition of alkali to your acid solution. So this is your observation table you need to prepare where you are having volume of 0.5 normal NaOH added before addition you are measuring the pH so here 0, 0.00 you are getting some pH value for every 0.3 ml addition it shows me change in its pH value. So I have to report, I have to take the readings, maximum reading, readings up to uh, 16, 17, up to 5 ml addition. I have tried to show here 15 readings. You utilize these readings. What do you do? You utilize this reading as it is unable to perform uh, uh, actual practical. I am providing here the reading so that further calculations with respect to this experiment, it is easy for you. You have to measure the delta pH. How will it measure the delta pH? Yes. 3.75 minus 3.5 the delta pH value first value will come as 0 0.25 like that you have to do the subtraction and find out the delta value for each of this readings of pH value delta V that is the difference in the second and first this will remain constant in all the cases so you have to keep this constant as 0 0.3 delta pH upon delta V you will calculate for all these readings which I have provided over here and yes the last column that is the mean V mean V how we will calculate yes 0.3 plus 0 0.00 this addition divided by 2 this value so you are not going to get first value you are going to get the second value as 0.15 so addition of third plus second divided by 2 you will get the third value like that you have to go and find out the value mean V value then we are going to utilize these observations for further calculation of pKa value for that purpose you need to draw a graph where you have to plot a graph of pH versus alkali added that is the first two columns which gives me information how much amount of alkali I have added and what is the pH value so look at this this particular part of the graph where I have taken ml of 0.5 normal uh, NH added with respect to the observed pH and second graph you need to plot on the same graph paper as delta pH upon delta V this column this particular column okay yes delta pH upon delta V versus mean V so here you have to plot you have to take 
two different scale one for 0.5 normal NaO charger and second scale for mean V. Here you can definitely put the pH value and delta pH upon delta V. What you will get? For this first graph you will get this particular increase in pH value which will remain constant ok. And from second graph you will get this particular nature with a peak definite peak and center of the peak will give you what? Yes, equivalence point of titration. Center of the peak highest um, delta pH upon delta V value this will give you equivalence point of the titration ok. And this x ml if I do half of that what I will get? Yes, I will get half neutralization point. So, once you get x value make the half of it find out x by 2 ml is how much and then you go for that pH value which will be nothing but pKa that is dissociation constant of your given weak acid. So, Ka equal to anti log of minus pKa that will give you the value of Ka. Tabulate all these results and present your data as equivalence point of the titration as xml what are the value pKa and then Ka value. If your experiment goes wrong somewhere you need to check whether my whether I have done the standardization of pH meter. Yes, I can go for theoretical calculations always. If it is stoichiometric reaction, I can always use, I can I always take the help of N1 V1 equal to N2 V2. This theoretical calculation will tell you where your actual equivalence point will come ok and keep your table clean after the experiment. Now, in this particular experiment to avoid the concentration effect, always the titrant concentration must be 5 times larger than the solution to be titrated. We have taken 0.1 normal acetic acid and 0.5 normal NaOH ok. What are the advantages of what a, whatever titration I have performed today pH metric? Yes, without utilization of indicator I have minimized the chemicals utilized ok. I have utilized dilute solutions ok and I have got accurate results yes this is the need of today's era that I have to minimize the usage of chemicals and based on this particular experiment you will definitely answer the assignment which I have provided here the few questions I have highlighted which are very useful for you to give the online practical viva as an exam pattern which will be coming for you this year ok. You need to you should able to write down the molecular equation the reaction between acetic acid and sodium hydroxide what are the salts form. Now, how the uh, which electrode is utilized to measure the pH, composition, working, cell representation of that glass electrode, how you will standardize the pH meter, what is half neutralization point or what is Ka, pKa, pH and pH scale. I am definitely sure that you will definitely answer, I am sure that you will definitely answer all these questions. All the best. Thank you.